Aloha. Aloha, aloha. It is 11-11. Actually, it's, it's 1-11 here in Hawaii. It's 7-11 in New York. <laughs> Actually, it looks like I, I missed it by a couple of minutes while I was configuring my, uh, my live broadcast because we're streaming live also at the same time. But at least today, it is 10-10, October 10th, 2020. Kind of cool. I have something very special prepared for everyone. And um, first of all, I got to say, it's really interesting that President Trump has been telling people that what's solving our problem, even with COVID, that the solution will be here by the end of the year. And that it's something big, that it's really big, and that it's better than ever, and it will be here by the end of the year. I wonder who he's been listening to, really. Uh, this is what is not in the mainstream news media. What I'm about ready to share with you, this is what deserves to go viral. So tune, turn up your listening ears, hold tight, and I'm about ready to take you on uh, quite a journey. This will not be quick. <laughs> It will help expand your mind. It may be a little bit of growing pains for your brain to stretch it a bit and expand your level of intelligence on what all science has finally come full circle to, to point to. This presentation, it will not be very quick. It is not the simplest thing, but I know what we want it to be is to be in simplicity for everyone. So I've taken time to put it in lay terms as much as possible. There will be some new terms that I will throw out, <clears throat> but this is revolutionary. And just as a little um, Kickstarter, I do uh, need to give a little legal disclaimer just to cover myself legally. And yeah, get it out of the way. The following information is for educational purposes only. No information or interpretation is to be used for the diagnosis or treatment of disease. As with any nutritional supplements, we can't guarantee to cure anyone's cancer or prevent anyone from getting COVID or any other disease. <laughs> with that out of the way, um, I'm so excited to introduce NERF2 activation with genomics as the bigger picture of what medical science has finally come full circle to. And Dr. Joe McCord, has the safest and most effective NERF2 activation formulas. He is the top medical research scientist in this area, the number one name in the game. I think this is what Donald Trump has been saying that we're going to have to solve our health problems by the end of the year, and it's here, here and now. Dr. McCord is the last Elliott Crescent gold medal recipient, which is the most prestigious award any doctor or scientist can receive. His work has been nominated for Nobel Prizes, but the Elliott Crescent Gold Medal is much more prestigious and places Dr. McCord in the same company as Nikola Tesla with alternating current, Alexander Grand Bell with a telephone, Orville Wright with the airplane, and Henry Ford. Dr. McCord is recognized as having discovered superoxide dismutase, SOD. Genomics act activates NERF2, which goes in and talks to the genes. If you look at the difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly, they both eat basically the same thing and have the same genes, but their genes are expressing at different times of the timeline. So they look or walk or fly quite different. The NERF2 activation is literally going to upregulate and downregulate your genes that need to be adjusted to get you back to balance. What's that going to do for you? Only time will tell for you to know for sure. No one knows what all of their imbalances are. In 1978, renowned physiologist, Dr. C. Samuel West wrote, if we could overcome premature aging, the master of degenerative diseases, we could overcome them all. It's interesting, the master of all diseases is the aging process itself is from oxidative stress biochemically. That's what science has discovered. 
That's why oxidative stress had already become the most commonly studied and published area of medical science with more money dumped into it than anything by the time Dr. McCord's first NERF-2 activator solved the oxidative stress problem, which was published in 2005. And especially since the problem was solved by NERF-2 activation in 2005, the actual science of oxidative stress from free radicals has evolved and is better understood now more than ever. Yet before we really know, before we really knew how to actually solve this problem, so many products had already hit the market. So many people had been taught misinformation. Most people are still believing and teaching the misinformation of the antioxidant myth that was taught so prevalently prior to 2005. So before we can give you the bigger picture, there's some history that we need to cover and we need to clear up some mixed misconceptions. So by the time we get to the bigger picture, which is gonna take some time to do, by the time we get there, it's going to have much more power than it would otherwise have, trust me. And with all the money though that was, and that was and unfortunately still is dumped into the antioxidant myth, there's an obvious vital need, need to clarify that. So, think we're justified in taking the time and this will add again much more clarity to the much more bigger picture of NERF2 science presented within this presentation. The first paper ever published on oxidative stress was in 1969 with the discovery of SOD, superoxide dismutase, discovered by our very own Dr. Joe McCord in 1968 over 50 years ago. This is how Dr. McCord gave birth to the whole field of free radical biology and medicine. He made the first discovery and he published the first paper on it. So the whole science community looks at him as the father of it. SOD, superoxide dismutase, can dismutase or reintegrate 1 million superoxide molecules per second back to oxygen. This is the most powerful form of oxygen therapy I've ever heard of. Superoxide dismutase equals oxygen integration. Because superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, and other oxides are free radical byproducts from using oxygen, hydrogen, and other molecules to turn the life process of the cells on when oxygen and hydrogen are used to turn the engine of our cells on, they end up missing an electron they disintegrate and lose an electron, just like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide coming out the tailpipe of a combustion engine. And SOD, catalase, and glutathione act as our catalytic converters to automatically reintegrate the superoxide and hydrogen peroxide and other free radicals back to oxygen, hydrogen, and hemoglobin at a one to one million per second ratio. So each SOD molecule converts one million superoxide molecules per second back to one million oxygen mo molecules per second. Otherwise, superoxide and other free radicals are very unstable and will damage your cells many times per second, which is exactly what starts to happen as NERF2 shuts off more and more. For as long and as far as we can tell, NERF2 has been breaking more and more until death. And we finally figured out how to fix it. You've probably heard of the widespread myth, the ORAC scale science, which is based entirely on a one-to-one -one ratio of one molecule of a so-called direct antioxidant from sources like vitamin C and E to one molecule of a free radical like superoxide or hydrogen peroxide. So the ORAC rating measures how many one-to-one -one ratio type molecules a product has. That's a one-to-one -one ratio, then they're used up, depleted, and gone. So, maybe even worse. And people have tried to solve the free radical problem 
by consuming antioxidants from high ORAC scale food sources like acai, goji, and blueberries, which we know along with vitamins, they do have their health benefits. But it turns out they're actually qualifying better as pro-oxidants than antioxidants because they themselves, by themselves, they literally increase oxidative stress. The key to understanding the science is in the math. Let's show you here really quickly. I'm gonna do a screen share for everybody. Just to show you what I'm talking about here. I just took this photo because I'm also on a green screen. So here we are with a bottle of acai. Okay, acai is also known to have one of the highest ORAC ratings, right? Right there on the bottle, when I zoom into it, it says its ORAC rating is 3,900. To give it the benefit of a doubt, just imagine it has an ORAC rating of 10,000, which is right off the ORAC charts, basically. You would have to drink 100 bottles of acai per second to keep up with one molecule of SOD because one molecule of SOD can convert 1 million per second every second. Can you imagine the complications of trying to solve the problem that way? Imagine wrapping your mouth around a fire hose and turning it on full blast and you still wouldn't come close to equal the power of all the super antioxidant enzymes the trillions of cells in your body produce when the genes are tuned right. Trying to solve the problem with ORAC based science is like trying to put out a house fire with a glass of water. The actual math problem is so big, it's like dumping a glass of water in the ocean, expecting to make a difference in the volume of the ocean. We actually produce more free radicals by digesting and assimilating an orange than the ORAC value of the orange. And even if that wasn't the case, which it is, we weren't, we weren't designed to consume enough through our diet, even if they had the one to one million per second ratio as the super antioxidant enzymes our cells are supposed to produce, like SOD. Dr. McCord already produced the consumable SOD product to try that, and consuming SOD didn't work either. There are all kinds of problems with it. When everything came full circle, everything pointed to NERF2 activation to get all the trillions of cells in our body to produce what they're supposed to. You see, the discovery of SOD from that discovery and the birth of free radical biology and medicine in 1968 and 69. From that point, for years and years, the money was being dumped into ORAC scale science, which was entirely proven to be a myth by a 2005 peer reviewed in vivo human clinical study. But so much money had already been dumped into the belief of the one to one ratio products most people still believe the myth. Let's go ahead and zoom into, I'm gonna do another screen share to help show you what, again, what I'm talking about here. Okay. If we Google words like Coke, and antioxidants, what you have showing right at the top of that page there, open up that link, is uh, Coke has had, you know, you'll, you'll see this link right here. Coca-Cola has advertised antioxidants in their soda pop. And other markets have also used this tactic too because of what most people have been taught to believe and the money connected to those beliefs. And this shows the words 
antioxidant will be replaced by polyphenols. By the time this article was produced, which was last updated in November 2010, by 2010, the use of the word antioxidants for ORAC ingredients was being banned in some countries. So they've built the term polyphenols. And if we Google polyphenols, <laughs> what are polyphenols? What's interesting is it says they, act, they, they basically are, are giving it the same thing. They're connecting polyphenols to antioxidant power. Like, like what we show you here, this is basically one of the very top links that comes up, top foods with polyphenols. When we go to the site, right at the, at the top of the page, Promoting cloves and other spices, cocoa powder and dark chocolate, berries, non-berry fruits, beans, nuts, vegetable soy, and red, red wine, which are some different markets. And at the top right of the page, it reads medically reviewed by, and I'm just going to say, I, I'll, 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 I'll translate for you, a registered dietitian, licensed dietitian, and certified exercise physiologist by American College of Sports Medicine, that's what those credentials are. And it also says updated on March 8th, 2019. And red wine is a pretty big market. Let's go ahead and click on that here. Which reads, many people drink a glass of red wine every night for the antioxidants. The high number of polyphenols, and there's a trusted source here, we'll get to, link. Um, high, the high number of polyphenols in red wine contributes to that antioxidant count. There you go. When we hover over this link, it says, trusted source, nature, highly respected journal, expert written journal, peer reviewed journal. Yet when we click on the link for that, it says page not found. Sorry, the page you requested is unavailable. The link you requested might be broken or no longer exists. So even though so much of that article may appear credible to people who don't know better and was updated just last year, they're complete, they completely failed to provide their credible source of medical journal to support the entire article. A coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. It's no surprise the link to nature is broken. The whole thing stinks either way. As long as the number one ranking Google sites that seem credible continue to promote the one-to-one -one ratio ORAC ingredients as antioxidants and are the top ranking sites and the, the top ranking sites are, are still now teaching polyphenols as what contributes to the antioxidant count. People are still being led astray still today. When myths are spread intentionally and knowingly, then they become a hoax. Right? Even if major markets have become very comfortable with the money they've been making. And although they've had about 15 years to correct themselves, it seems they need our help here. As a matter of integrity, we have a moral obligation to share this. So many people who have come to me for help have expressed how they've spent more and more money on health products. Some had already spent their fortune and they gained more and more weight and got sicker and sicker and ended up in the poorhouse on top of it all by the time they came to me. And many have ended up humbly requesting my charity and I've given a lot. And there are a ton of people who need our help who are spending good money on so-called antioxidant products 
that have only proven to increase the free radical damage, the same damage their products have claimed to alleviate. It's been banned in Europe more and more, and it's becoming more and more of a hoax. But the myth was initially perpetuated in innocence and ignorance for so many years by people who are just doing the best they were taught. Well, we're a bunch of duplicators, and we aren't saved in ignorance. Paul Myhill has had an interest in biology for many years, much of his life. And he said God gave him the initial formula for NERF2 activation. Paul's formula was lacking refinement to make it very effective. Paul heard Dr. Joe McCord was right in his backyard, heard about what he was doing at University of Colorado, and he introduced it to Dr. McCord, who quickly began studying and refining that first generation NERF2 activation formula. Here's another screen share for you. This is a landmark study. Quite earth shaking. Here's the landmark 2005 peer-reviewed study. Notice the name of free radical biology and medicine at the top. Notice that. Notice the name of the title, the introduction of human superoxide dismutase and catalase in vivo. This is a human study in vivo, meaning full human beings taking a pill a day with a meal, and a fundamentally new approach to antioxidant therapy. Just below that, notice the names of Paul Myhill and Dr. Joe McCord. It says received here, 22nd of June, and it says accepted 28th of August, 2005, right there. The article says, as we come down here, oxidative stress is now recognized to be associated with more than 200 diseases, as well as with the normal aging process. And the names, as for vitamin C and E, right here, carotenoids, and a long list of others. And the results of studies with supplemental antioxidants have been quite disappointing overall. Okay. T-bars are a measurement, which we see talked about here, T-bars, our measurement of lipid peroxidation. Lipids are the fats in the blood. Since they get damaged the, the fastest and easiest by free radicals, they're the best endpoint to measure oxidative stress scientifically. Not the amount of orange particles, carotenoids from carrots and other orange colored foods. T-bars have normally increased more and more until we die. But our lipids can also recover within two weeks of Dr. McCord's NERF2 activation formulas back to the level of a healthy newborn baby, even within an 80-year-old, basically. McCord's first generation NERF2 activation formula proved that with this very study. The chart on the third page, let's go here, zoom in. labeled figure one, section A, in the top left here, shows the steady increase of oxidative stress, a linear progression after the age of 20 without NERF2 activation. It usually climbs higher and higher with age until people die. Then section B below that here shows no significant change 
when separated by genders of men and women. Section C in the top right is very revealing. It shows oxidative stress was significantly higher for those taking vitamin C and E, not just by a little, but by about double the oxidative stress beyond those who didn't take vitamin C and E. In section D, we see for both groups, the levels of T-bars dropped by an average of 40% after 30 days, and the age-related increase in T-bars disappeared completely back to the average level of a healthy newborn within 30 days, according to Dr. Joe McCord. Again, because the lipids get damaged the fastest and easiest, and they also recover, they're also able to recover quickly within two weeks of nerve 2 activation. The free radical damage to lipids is the best endpoint to measure oxidative stress scientifically. Prior to this particular landmark study, this fundamentally new approach to solve this problem, nothing lowered T-bar levels within our actual blood tests. Even though oxidative stress had become the number one focus of medical science before the problem was finally solved here. The next page shows, let's zoom into that. <clears throat> and you're looking at red blood cells. Next page shows red blood cells take 120 days to drop to the oxidative stress level of a newborn because that's their life cycle, how long they live before they're all replaced. Plus the chart at the bottom of the same page shows the increased production of SOD by about 30% and catalase by about 54% within the same 120 days. Some tissues cycle faster than others, and this helps us understand why it's important to continue NERF2 activation beyond 30 or even 120 days. Dr. McCord says missing one day isn't a big deal, but if we miss it for a couple of weeks, our genes basically go back to the same level of expression they were before we started. You can now understand the main reasons why nothing based on ORAC one-to-one -one ratio ones, those types of <laughs> ones, which better qualify as pro-oxidants, or at least what I call semi-prooxidants because they increase oxidative stress greater than not even taking them without nerf 2 activation especially when they themselves may be turning into free radicals when they get in a fight with the free radicals they end up losing they end up losing and missing an electron themselves they become a free radical they set themselves and the same ORAC supplements are still having many other health benefits. And when they're taken along with Dr. McCord's NERF2 activation technology, they do not increase oxidative stress as they otherwise do, which is what we proved to you in this other chart here, right? And D, they were both taken down to the level of a newborn. <clears throat> so, when taken with Dr. McCord's NERF2 activation technology, they have all the benefits that they're known for, plus they do not increase oxidative stress as they otherwise do. So, we can stay friends with everyone involved with the nutritional supplement industry while we educate them with plenty of love and understanding. We, and we help them understand how important it is to join forces with this. And that way they can help us with the much bigger picture. All of this adds perspective for a much, much bigger picture. So, Initially, Dr. McCord was only hoping his NERF2 activator would increase two enzymes, SOD, catalase, and maybe glutathione, the so two or three enzymes. 
super antioxidant enzymes. He and other doctors on his team said that would have a small but important impact. There are many different kinds of doctors. And Dr. McCord isn't just the kind who practices medicine, who sees patients. Dr. McCord is a hardcore medical research scientist and has been working in science labs for over 50 years. There's a big difference between the type of doctor that just sees patients and the type that works in the lab. There really is. So the kind of clinical studies he is constantly involved with are the gold standard of medicine called peer review, which involves a review committee of anonymous members who are each experts in the field of study that's being conducted. And peer reviews typically take five to 10 years to complete. Most of them don't even qualify to be published because their results aren't powerful enough during the period that they go through to, to try to qualify. Most of them fail to hit the bar. The, that, this is the highest bar set. And it takes two, at least two independent universities who are both funded, prepared, and then they have to follow the same exact steps, independently submitting their results. If anything doesn't match or add up, the review committee can make them go back and do more research. They can ask any kind of questions they want. And they can even bring in another third independent university to triple check everything step by step and see if they get the same exact results. In fact, Harvard was brought in to the, this peer-reviewed clinical study with Dr. McCord's first generation NERF2 activator because the results they were seeing were so revolutionary. We're talking about oxidative stress reduction, which had never been done before. Everything else ever published had always increased this. And finally, it was miraculously being taken back to that of a healthy newborn, even within an 80-year-old. The review committee ended up getting a serious education on the most revolutionary medical science ever published with the number one published area of medical science. And although they're all anonymous while the study is being conducted, they can make themselves known after the study is approved and published. And one of them just happened to be the past president of the American Heart Association. Just to help you see the caliber of the kind of people who are on this type of review committee. Because of his recommendation, Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU, began a peer reviewed heart study. And with the shockwaves heard around the world within the medical community from this 2005 landmark study, from this first one, VCU wasn't alone. Many other top universities around the world started other peer reviewed clinical studies on Dr. McCord's NERF2 activator and uh, his technology. And even though these peer reviews typically take about five to 10 years to complete, several of those are now completed for us. But in the beginning, there was only this one, just one which became even more famous the year before it was even completed and published because ABC heard about what was being done the previous year before the results had been published, made known publicly. ABC spent millions of dollars in their own time and money to produce a primetime investigation Lots of companies would pay to have that kind of press coverage. And ABC didn't ask for one penny from the company, to either validate it or try to expose it as another fraud or myth. Let's face it, mainstream media makes way more money on controversy. When they heard the last Elliott Crescent gold medal recipient was saying he'd solved a problem that everything else had only made worse, in the area of medical research with more money dumped into it than anything else, they jumped at the opportunity to spend millions of dollars in their own time and money, not really knowing what the results would be until the results of their own reporter came in. Reporter John Quinones showed up at Dr. McCord's office and he basically said, 
I heard you can do it. In, I, I heard you can do in two weeks what, our, what your study will show for four weeks for T-bars. And you've got two weeks to show what it does to, with me. And that's what we're going to show the world. So he didn't, get, he didn't cut Dr. McCord any slack. He knew he was dealing with that. Uh, he knew what it was about dealing with Dr. McCord's reputation. It was Dr. McCord's reputation on the line as the father of free radical biology, the man who basically invented it, his reputation of having received the Elliott Crescent Gold Medal, of having his work having been nominated for Nobel Prizes. And with the before and after blood test measuring the T-bars of John Kenyonis, <clears throat> Dr. McCord's NERF2 activator produced within two weeks with John Kenyonis, what the study showed happens in four weeks. So total third party validation again and again with ABC, just like Harvard. That ABC primetime produced the most positive press, most positive press ever given to a nutritional supplement, still today. And other reports are available today, but this is where it all started. <clears throat> From, the, this, from this 2000 landmark study, they actually learned Dr. McCord's NERF2 activator was at least 10 times more powerful than what he had hoped for. Because they found out that all 30, not just two or three, but all 30, which is 100% of all known super antioxidant enzymes, that have ever been discovered, all 30 are regulated by NERF2. That's something that ABC didn't mention in their prime time. That's something that this particular study doesn't mention. But through this, that's something that was discovered through their process here. And ABC, the ABC prime time, created an instant surge of public interest and product orders, which the company was not prepared at all prepared to fulfill. So they missed out on a lot of that surge. And that all stopped about as fast as it started. Over the next five years, that same product sat on the shelves of GNC, CVS, and other retail stores and went nowhere. At the same time, the company was losing millions of dollars per year because the vast majority of people had no idea what the difference between their bottle was what it could do for them compared to any other bottle sitting on the same shelves because the bottles weren't saying anything. The bottles couldn't tell the story that needed to be told, such as what I'm telling you here. And that's what <laughs> was actually happening. That's where they were when David Brown recognized the solution and convinced them to hire him as their CEO and to take charge in getting the word out by taking their publicly traded company into a network marketing model, which was another first ever in history, because that had never been done before. But right away, it started showing a profit for the first time in history, very first time. It still went through the same S curve involved with timing and growth that every company goes through. But with David Brown as a CEO, with Dr. McCord's reputation and uh, revolutionary product, they soon recruited some leaders in the industry who began running with it like their hair was on fire. And I was actually introduced to this right about that time. Initially, I was introduced to Trisha and Eric Albertson, Trisha over the phone. And the next day, Eric traveled from out of state to be the first person to actually show up on my doorstep and teach me in person. And he took me to meet the CEO, David Brown, that same day. And eventually, with thousands of other amazing people, including Peter Ngo and Paige Gimbel, we helped that company break all records for how fast a company can hit 200 million per year. That's right. That's before we knew what we knew what we know now. So. I'm going to share another screen. 
during this period, which was the last quarter of 2009, the fourth peer-reviewed clinical study was published in circulation. The American Heart Association's Medical Journal, which is the number one authority, authority on heart studies. I like to always ask, according to who, and I like to be able to point to the number one authority in whatever area we're talking about here. We can't guarantee anyone they'll never have heart failure. We can't guarantee anyone that. Heart failure is the number one cause of death, killing one out of two, 50% of men and women. And most women don't even know they're part of that statistic. It's called the silent killer because most of the time there's no warning signs, no tap on the shoulder, no knock on the door, and most people don't live past the first incident. And we can't guarantee even the best nutritional supplements will prevent you from having heart failure. Now, the American Heart Association, through their medical journal, Circulation, they can teach you all you need to know about what it does for heart failure. Right? So uh, somehow, with as much as they say here, with as powerful it is as it is, somehow they can get away with it. Dr. McCord and several other doctors have worked hard and have done what they can to bring to light the most powerful study the American Heart Association has ever published in history. And that was this one, November 2nd, 2009. It's been over... 10 years since then, a lot of people have died of heart failure. A lot more than COVID. The American Heart Association has not done much of anything other than allowing this to be published because it passed the peer reviewed test, which is the gold standard of medical science. They had to publish it. They passed the test better than anything they'd ever seen. Let me ask you a question. Was a study published that prevented 100% of heart failure when 100% failed without it by artificially e increasing high blood pressure until 100% of the right ventricles blew out with the initial control group that didn't have any NERF2 activation? Again, I'll ask it again. Was a study published that prevented 100% of heart failure when 100% failed without it by initially increasing high blood pressure until 100% of the right ventricles blew out with the initial control group that didn't have any NERF2 activation? Here's where you can find that answer. And if so, another question, does it mean we should be able to say so? Even if the AFDA doesn't want us to say what the results were without having it in our hand or showing you the actual study and let you, letting you read it for yourselves as I scroll through the whole thing. And the American Heart Association did publish it. And they got away with telling us the truth. But that study is now already buried under 10 years of other studies. And all the while, they could have drawn more attention to it yet they still remain quite silent on the matter, still. Plus, most people don't want to read something like this. It's complicated. Even for me to literally decipher the coded language of peer reviews. So, Dr. McCord gave a presentation on this after it was published. Dr. McCord gave a detailed presentation on the take home messages from the study and the tickets sold for about $100 a piece. Since most people would rather travel and listen, at least rather listen to someone explain it in lay terms, uh, I'm doing my best for you here. If you'd like to have access to the archive of Dr. McCord presentations on his first generation formula, explaining several of the initial peer reviews, 
such as this heart study, private message me. It would take you about 24 hours of watching each of them a few times, and I'm doing my best just to sum it up for you here. The American Heart Association has usually showed the public, uh, has usually allowed the public to search their archive of every study ever published in circulation. Which is their official journal. From several searches during that time on their website, when searching the keywords nutritional supplement, I found that most of the paper, paper after paper, was teaching medical doctors how to deal with people who are bringing any information to them about a nutritional supplement. And it was basically all negative for the supplements, overwhelmingly, except for Dr. McCord's NERF2 activator. I really couldn't find anything really positive until I found, and, and, until I, you know, except for that study we just showed you, which had proven to produce the most powerful results they'd ever seen. Then they quickly eliminated their search option completely. When they finally got back around to adding a search option, I still didn't see that heart study that we just showed you here. And now that it's finally showing up for us again, it's just the first 11 pages of the 26 that I just showed you. This, the, the, the main study, because their own link to the data supplement, which is the rest of it, is still a broken link. And it has, has been broken since soon after that study was published. So the public still no longer has had easy access to search every study they've ever published. As a public speaker, I've been complaining about the absence and neglect of this for the past 10 years. Maybe that's why we can finally find the main paper again. I just found it again yesterday. And I'll continue to speak up as long as it takes to help bring, to, bring this to light, to help bring to light to the masses who need to hear it. They're heavily funded by the pharmaceutical industry, as are the medical schools. Can you say, Conflict of interest? Not everyone has the courage to say that. Apparently, they have no conflict of interest to their investors. Just a huge conflict of interest to the public, 50% of which are dying of heart failure. Some things don't hit home until they hit home. The same day this article was published, I heard there was a meeting where top leaders were gathering for a live public meeting where the results of this heart study would be discussed and shared. At the same time, my mother's youngest sister, my aunt, who was only about 10 years my senior, had just started to complain of high blood pressure. So I knew she was at high risk. And I insisted she hop in my car and go to hear what all the excitement was about. And instead of making the decision to activate her nerve too, she decided to set up an appointment with her medical doctor which wasn't possible for about another month. The doctor, that initial appointment was set for a month out before she could actually get to it. It's amazing how many doctors like to schedule appointments a month at a time. And she died of a heart attack in the middle of the night before that first appointment ever came. She'd been a single mother. Her oldest son, who had just got married, ended up having his younger siblings who hadn't graduated high school yet and ended up having them live with him and his new wife. And I tell this story because sometimes it doesn't hit home until it hits home. During this time, through several studies which were being conducted, another breakthrough occurred which unveiled the fact that Nerf 2 was actually 100 times more powerful than Dr. McCord had initially hoped for. Because instead of only two to three genes, we discovered about 300 genes were being influenced by it. 
And by this time, Nerf 2 activation was catching the attention of the biggest drug companies, Pfizer and Merck, because they don't really want to get left in the dust. Merck had to abandon their project because after spending millions of dollars in their own research, they proved their product, their drug, was killing people way too fast. And Pfizer's research proved their drug for Nerf 2 activation wasn't killing people too fast to prevent them from unleashing their drug onto the masses. They also used Dr. McCord's initial formula to compare their results. And they proved Dr. McCord's first generation formula was 10 times more effective at activating Nerf 2 than their drug. And their drug still has the negative effects as all drugs do because of the way they work chemically. And to top it off, they charge 10 times more for a month's supply. When's the last time you've heard of a drug company comparing any drug to a nutritional supplement? <clears throat> they chose to do that in this case because of the power of the science. And this, is the, this was the, the number one formula, number one proven, proven formula at that time. But how's that for, uh, you know, something they proved was 10 times more effective and they charged 10 times more for their drug, for a month's supply of their drug, than the nutritional supplement that's 10 times more effective. How's that for the, how can we do this without you attitude and mindset? With all the people who are suffering and dying, one out of two deaths from heart failure alone, which is, also happening within the families of doctors too. And the American Heart Association knows how vital this is. If they had integrity, they would do more to share the take home messages of what has been proven with Dr. McCord's Nerf 2 activation formulas. The fact that there are several drug companies that are now striving to develop a drug that is a Nerf 2 activator also further validates Nerf 2 activation in general. When our cells are tuned properly, they're so extremely efficient, we never understood how efficient, and I still don't know anyone else who speaks the way I do about how efficient they really are, but their genes must be tuned to give them that efficiency. The more plugged up the system gets, especially the gut itself, the less we even assimilate the food we eat. And how much money do we spend each month on food alone? What I personally noticed is that I was saving money on the cost of food alone that I wasn't eating to the point that McCord's Nerf 2 activator was more than paying for itself just by being on it in the cost of food alone. In this economy, who wouldn't just like to save some money? I didn't know what the problem that I had was with low blood sugar when I would forget to eat until after I got on Nerf 2 activation technology of Dr. McCord. I could turn into a bear sometimes. I've been a whole new person in, re in that regard. I haven't had a problem with blood sugar levels ever since. Over the past 10 plus years since I've been on Nerf 2 activation. Nerf 2 has proven to help stabilize blood sugar more powerfully than anything I've ever seen. How many things are associated with blood sugar issues? That's a huge market right there. People live longer and suffer harder with diabetes than anything else. 258 studies were published on Nerf 2 activation and diabetes last year altogether. And since we've had another seven published within the past seven days, another 258 this year already, and it's October 10th, 2020. It's 10-10, 2020 today. Let's do another screen share real quick.
this next one, well, real quick, it wasn't coming out the quickest. Sorry about this. Little technical click of a and a click here. Let's. Okay, here we go. Pull this up here. Perfect. I can do the screen share for you. Huh. This diagram is from Dr. Drew McCord himself. This one is very revealing. After 10 years from the first generation NERF2 activation formula was produced, 10 times more science had been produced since then. We learned 10 times more than what we knew before. All we knew was, at first, all we knew was one mechanism to activate NERF2. And that was how to release it from another protein that was holding it outside the nucleus. And if it can't get in the nucleus, it can't regulate the genes because that's the vault that holds the genes within it. Now we know what the actual shutoff mechanism is, and we've learned how to prevent that from happening. And if all we do is release NERF2, it can diffuse into the nucleus, which is what the first formula was good at. Then, then it can also diffuse right back out of the nucleus. If that's all we do is release it so it can get in, it can diffuse right back out which is still happening to some degree with the first generation formula. As awesome as it has proven to be. It's amazing what we've been showing you so far. The results we've been showing you were produced with that first generation product. There's another mechanism that allows us to shut the door once NERF2 activation uh, happens and NERF2 gets in. So we shut the door that keeps NERF2 in the nucleus where the genes actually are. It keeps NERF2 there much longer so it has more time to tune the genes, which is the whole purpose of NERF2 activation. No wonder Dr. McCord's second generation NERF2 activation formulas are much more effective at activating NERF2. As powerful as the first generation formula is proven to be, Protandem is only designed to target one of the known mechanisms to get it released from the protein that isn't supposed to be holding it, keeping it out of the nucleus. So the bottom line of this chart represents Protandem as verified by the bottom of the section on the far right. It says protanum, representing the line that's at the bottom of the graph. Look at the difference between that and the one at the top that's green. And that's identified as genomics, also known as PD-123. A lot of people have a misconception about that. Several studies have been studied and published on PD-125-2, which is the one just below the the second most powerful one, the one just below genomics. NERF2 activation is the most powerful thing I've ever seen as far as what we consume to restore functionality in the body. <clears throat> All the lines on this chart are Dr. McCord formulas. At first, the line on the bottom, protanum, was the best NERF2 activation available. And the green line at the top, that's our genomics. Just look at the difference in the line at the bottom and the line at the top. Which is your pick? Which is your top pick? Genomics really stands out above and beyond the rest as Dr. McCord's number one most efficient NERF2 activation formula. I think there are also benefits of having access to more than one formula. And this is something that not everyone is willing to admit. It takes a bit more integrity, especially when we don't have access to market all the formulas. That's uncommon. Yet I think there are benefits of having access to more than one formula because all the different ingredients are also known for other health benefits. 
and it's uncommon, yet some people are allergic to ashwagandha, which is in protandum. Personally, I'd never been a pill popper in my life, and I was proud of that fact. I'd never taken anything longer than three months, and even that was very rare. I like to eat healthy, think healthy, and have healthy lifestyle choices. And I learned that I couldn't activate NERF 2 the way Dr. McCord's formulas do with just positive thinking. On the topic of creating healing energy frequencies and signatures, I'm, the, I'm one of the best in the world that teaches people how to create some of the same homeopathic type energy healing, even from supplements. Some of the same frequencies that the you know and signatures energy signatures that supplements have from different ingredients and formulas and sometimes we can get the same types of results homeopathically if they can be activated with that kind of energy so i performed an experiment and felt myself go back to where i was before back to where i was from the very beginning and that took about two to four weeks because with nerve 2 activation, with some things like nerve 2 activation, some things must be done physically. And a conversation with Dr. McCord and myself personally, he confirmed it, that uh, this is, <laughs> there are some things we're doing that have to be done physically to get the physical result. And uh, a total paradigm change. I'm proud to be a pill popper, but not just any pill. After 10 years on Protanum, my body was actually ready for something new. I don't know what all the benefits are. None of us do. We don't, we don't know what all the benefits are of having more than one option. Not all the cards are in yet, but it's amazing that you can be part of a company that's licensed with this technology that Dr. McCord has literally been nominated for Nobel Prizes for, and he's been given the Elliott Crescent Gold Medal, which is given to people who radically changed the world for the better forever. So, the rest of this presentation is where we finally get to focus on the bigger picture. And I know you've already taken a chunk of your time. We've been in it for an hour. But finally, that lays the groundwork to finally help unveil a much bigger picture. This is what I've been leading and doing all this preparation for. The NERF2 activation actually turns back the clock on your genes. NERF2 is a master key as a master gene regulator in the body. But it's also what breaks more and more until we die, unless we fix it. The science of this technology, NERF2 activation science, will stretch your brain a little bit. It's what all the science we've learned has finally come full circle to. And this is a new and revolutionary game changer for the whole medical industry. I, for one, wouldn't trust my health to just anyone. When it comes to NERF2 activation, I, for one, am only willing to trust the number one name in the game. It's a very complex thing. Our body is quite complex and quite simple all at the same time. It's quite simple to take a pill a day, just one pill a day, and at the same time, to solve a much, such a complex problem, isn't it? To just take one pill a day to solve such a complex problem. It's simple and complex. It's much more simple than taking one drug at a time for all the different disease mechanism genes, which all have a long list of negative effects that they're known for. 
we can just reactivate your own master key that tunes all of them. That's quite simple. So your body is quite complex and quite simple all at the same time. NERF2 is simply the master key gene regulator we are all born producing that regulates 100% of our extremely complex 3,000 plus disease mechanism genes, also called survival genes. That's right, this makes it over a thousand times more powerful than what Dr. McCord originally had hoped for. Let's focus in on the much bigger picture, how we were able to get access to that information even. Uh, this is what we're gonna get into here. These 3,000 plus genes, by the way, are so complex, no biochemist, no biochemist in the world knows what they all are or what they all do, not even close, because it's been way too much information, especially when you consider how much we all have to understand to know what each gene product does to add to or take away the functionality of our cells. What all their mechanisms are in our cells for life and death but the world's largest gene database called Ingenuity has accomplished just that for all the scientists and for all of us. And Ingenuity does have access to all of that information, all categorized and organized with the help of all the genetic experts, biochemists, and all medical research scientists who have ever contributed to that from all around the world. So that's where we've drawn our information from, as we should, because Ingenuity is the authority on that. Again, I like to ask according to who, and I like to be able to point to the top authority in each category, according to them. This isn't just about Dr. Joe McCord, who's recognized as the leader in this field. This is about the bigger picture of what all of that medical science has finally led us to, which not even Dr. McCord himself would ever be able to unmask on his own. Ingenuity compiles all of the scientific data from all of the other largest gene databases in the world all together into one database, including SwissProt and GenBank. Those are big ones. And there are several others. And this includes everything published in the National Library of Medicine, which is found at pubmed.gov. Ingenuity knows about. Everything published in every medical journal, they're all available there. Ingenuity knows about. All of that data is now available through Ingenuity, which in itself has become the master key for us to understand the bigger picture. All the time and money that has been pouring through all of those medical schools globally, which have also been heavily funded by the, drunk, by the drug companies, by Big Pharma, all of that has helped create ingenuity, which in turn, ironically, has spilled the beans for us in a very, very big way, and has given us a much bigger picture of what NERF2 activation really does. There has been a much bigger picture coming all along, and now it's here. It's interesting that President Trump has been telling people that what's solving our problem, even with COVID, and what the solution is will be here by the end of the year, and it's something big, that it's really big, it's bigger than ever, and will be here by the end of the year. I wonder who he's been listening to, really. This is what has not been in the mainstream news media. This is what deserves to go viral. And it's a bit ironic that a big, huge part of this has been made possible because of the pharmaceutical industry, which is a whopping $1.3 trillion global market yearly 
and over 500 billion per year is from the USA alone. And it's ironic that not one drug company has been willing to really spill their beans and show the masses of the public the greater, the bigger picture of how weak the drugs of the past have been nor have they been willing to share the much bigger picture of NERF-2 activation. Ingenuity has completely unmasked big pharma as small pharma. I'm gonna start doing a screen share of, go back to uh, screen share where we were before of several other slides that are earth-shaking. This will send shockwaves throughout anything connected to the health industry. Again, here's where we were before, the slides where we were. Ingenuity is completely unmasked. Big pharma is small pharma. How that works is very simple. What they were big at is making money. They've had huge big, huge financial influence. And meanwhile, each of their actual drugs of the past has still only targeted one gene at a time, such as these genes here, or some of the genes of what NERF2 activation does, all of these. Well, the Drugs of the past have still only targeted one gene at a time, like a one-to-one -one ratio. And some of them have actually got it wrong, but NERF2 has never gotten it wrong. NERF2 has always taken each of the 3,000 plus genes, the survival genes, in the right direction of expression to produce the right amounts of each protein, each of which helps restore the homeostasis efficiency and functionality of your cells. There's another four. I'm gonna switch the type of viewing we do here. So, let's take a look at this one. Here's a bigger example of what I'm talking about. This represents, a, this is a slide from Ingenuity Database. On the far left are the categories of disease mechanism categories that have the most amounts of genes within them of all of the disease mechanism genes, of all the categories that we know about. And as you see, there's a bar here that we could scroll to the right, we could go further and further to the right, to see which categories have the fewest amount of genes. There's still more than what we're able to show here. There's so many disease mechanism categories. But this particular screen viewer and this mode will show us every category of every single disease mechanism that there is and all the amounts of genes in each category. And it scrolled to the far left. This was taken from a presentation that Dr. McCord did. And it shows you the time, the, the minute and second time stamp at the bottom of that. I can make that video available to you. The, the far left says cell division and cancer, which is closely associated with cell division. Those are the two categories that have the most amount of genes with them. And it's interesting because cancer is cell division gone wrong. What this means is that, uh, and, and it, we know from ingenuity that 100% of these are all regulated by NRF2 or NERF2. 100% regulated by NERF2. And what it means is that these are things that are definitely impacted by NERF2 activation. Give you an idea of how much of an impact. Um, here's the next slide. We're gonna zoom in on just a sliver of those. If we were to arrange all of those genes according to now the gene expression level of how much of that gene product they're supposed to produce from the smallest to the largest, we would end up seeing a big, a big uh, increase more and more like a curve 
from the genes that are supposed to be the least expressed to the tallest, expressing the most amount of a gene product. And if we do it, if we zoom into just a sliver of that, just a sliver of the midsection of that, this is basically what we're seeing. And the red bars represent where genes are expressed before versus after NERF2 activation. The green bars are exactly where the genes are supposed to be, actually, which is where NERF2 takes them. It takes them back to where they're supposed to be. It just zips along all of them through the whole genetic strand and tunes each of them where they're supposed to be. It's a zipper protein, master gene, key, master key gene regulator, how it works. That's NERF2. This is what we're born producing, all of us, to do this. This is what breaks more and more until we die. And as it breaks, you start getting more and more of that, what it looks like with the red bars. And this is something that we've been able, Dr. McCord was able to accomplish within 24 hours of NERF2 activation uh, in a Petri dish. We are not a Petri dish. And each type of study gives you different take home messages. We are not a Petri dish, but this is what happens within 24 hours of NERF2 activation. And subscribing to the world's largest gene database is the only way that we get access to this kind of information. This is how Dr. McCord's done it. And uh, being able to submit the data uh, before and after uh, gene array. And then here's another slide. Again, this is from the world's largest gene database, Ingenuity. They're the ones that have helped spill the beans for us on this. They are the one. We, we couldn't have done it without them. So 19 genes associated with atherosclerosis, according to them, are regulated by NERF2. This is showing at the time this was produced, that uh, it was during the time that NERF2 was the, still the best formula we had was protanin to activate NERF2. All these bolded ones, let me explain what that means. That means that a drug has been designed to target those genes on the left that are bolded. The asterisks that are next to some of those means that NERF2 activation does what the drug does without the negative effects of the drug. This is according to ingenuity. And then they give the descriptions of each of these, a gene, a gene title. Then the, the first column of arrows is the, where the genes are expressing within the disease process. Below the dark line is actually genes that are expressing in the right direction that you do not want to oppose. They're genes that are upregulating here in this case to solve the problem. They're not causing the disease. And you see there were a couple of drugs designed to target those and those were COX-2 inhibitors that were limiting the expression of those diseases, which a lot of drugs are are limiting the gene expression, uh, reducing that expression. And the COX-2 inhibitors, after killing hundreds of thousands of people in a very short period of time, they were taken off the market. So Big Pharma got it wrong, but as you see here, NERF2 didn't get it wrong. In every case that we've ever seen, NERF2 has gotten it right. And this one here, 7.61 there, that's actually the biggest difference that we've seen is uh, in all of these numbers, it's the biggest one, the one that was the numeric change fold on the far right is what we're looking at. It's just a different way to look at what we were showing you earlier, okay? And all of the ones above the line, those two arrows down were turned up and all the red arrows are up were turned down because we're opposing the disease process above this, the, the, the three at the bottom, everything there, that's, those were ones that were causing the disease. Okay, and um, look at this is a this is you know the beginnings of heart failure, atherosclerosis, is hardening of the arteries. So a lot of science has been dumped into that. A lot of drugs have been created to try to solve that problem because it's such a big killer, right? So um, each one of these having a drug, but what about all the genes that don't have a drug designed to target it? And that takes me to the next slide. According to the world's largest gene database, Ingenuity, 28 genes are strongly associated with colon cancer. They're all regulated by NRF2. And there are only one of those has a drug designed to target it. 
And NERF2 activation does what that drug does without the negative effects of that drug. But it also does, what about all 27 of the others? It also does the 27 of the others. So what about uh, <laughs> this drug company? How do they feel about the idea of this information from this presentation or from Dr. McCord's presentations and some other doctors, uh, anyone else who's willing to help get this message out, how would they feel about that? I'm gonna unplug my, uh, gotta put my power, computer battery dies here. How would that drug company feel? And think about it. If we come out and say, we've got the answers, you guys, how many of, how many, uh, how is government going to continue funding studies? A lot of those studies, they're not just funded by big pharma. They're also, a lot of them are getting government money to do those studies. Medical schools rely a lot, quite largely also on government funding. And who's going to keep paying them to solve problems if the problem has already been solved in a much bigger, better way? Um, well, why we're saying ingenuity has completely unmasked big pharma as small pharma. And here's Alzheimer's. There's a couple slides it takes because there's 66 genes. It takes two slides to fit them all. Here's the first 33. And here is the second slide of Alzheimer's for the second group of 33. And you can see this one is upregulated. ATP1A1, described as, it's titled ATPase Na plus dash K plus. Na plus stands for natrium, which is Latin for sodium. K plus is calcium, which is Latin for potassium. And that stands for the sodium potassium pump that my father discovered, which is the engine of the cell, which is what ATP turns on but this is a transporting the alpha-1 polypeptide, ATPase, which is necessary to turn on the life process of the cells. And we're helping do that with NERF2 activation. Pretty cool. I, that was cool when I saw that. Dr. McCord didn't even point that out. What I can show you one that he did point out as, back to this slide, with, when he was looking at this, he looked for one that he might recognize. And he pointed out the one here, TGFB1, because that's one that a lot of research has gone into. That happens to be one that is more known. That's TGF beta, is what TGFB1 is abbreviation stands for. And TGF beta, when it overexpresses like this, two to, you know, three or four times more than what we're supposed to produce, it causes collagen deposition. And how big of a trend has it been, especially the past couple of years? I've been going to the Natural Products Expo every year for the past 10 years. This year it was canceled because of the fear pandemic. But they're a massive trend are people trying to slap their own label on products for, you know, with collagen products, to consume product, to try to solve this problem by consuming more, product, pro, uh, more collagen. You can't solve this problem, though, just by consuming more collagen. If our genes are literally expressed to destroy it, it doesn't really matter how much collagen we try to consume. It doesn't compare to what happens when we get our, our, our cells' genes tuned properly. This is just one of over 3,000 examples that Ingenuity is capable of giving us, and it's one of the ones that it is giving us right now from Ingenuity. So thanks to them. And it, this is the topic that's more important for today. There's a new study that was just published in May of this year in the middle of the big fear pandemic, what was happening with COVID-19. And this was on literally a, a white, this is a, a, a paper, I'm gonna show it to you. A bunch of these genes, I'm gonna show you where I got this chart from. Let's start, let's stop this here from here and go to the study, which is right here. Go to this one. 
good to show you the actual studies where I get slides from too, if it's from a study. Here's that same slide, expression of 36 LPS induced cytokines. And how many of them are downregulated? 100% because this red bar at the top represents no NERF2 activation. You get 0% reduction, see, with no NERF2 activation. We know that with the control group. Yet with NERF2 activation, this, this represents the percentage as the lower they get, the more they're closer to 100%. So this second highest bar here, the, the first peptide represented, uh, first cytokine, I mean, that's represented here is, uh, <laughs> that's one that's changed the most. And some of these aren't changed quite as much. Because why? Well, it looks like from what we can tell from ingenuity, they're not supposed to be changed too much. And drugs that don't know better, that do things like that, can cause a problem. But our master protein has never caused that problem. And this is a big question in a lot of medical minds. There's already been studies, that, there's already been many questions like this asked. You know, wondering if this would protect cancer cells while we're trying to kill them with radiation, protect them too much. And there's already been studies like that worried, and, and, it, and it turns out that NERF2 activation sensitized the cancer cells, made it easier for them to die faster. If they knew the full science, they would never ask stupid questions. Well, I don't think any question is a stupid question. But if they knew where to go to get to the more of the source of this information, such as this presentation, or to the, really Dr. McCord is the greatest champion as the voice of ingenuity so far. He's the one that I've studied from the most. Um, you know, then they would have that education really uh, shortcutted. And I'm capable of helping point in that in the right direction as well. So let's go back to, um, Let's go ahead and go to the actual study here. This is just one of the slides there that I was showing you. This study is NERF2 activator PB123 as a potential therapeutic agent against COVID-19. Here's Dr. Joe McCord's name, Brooks Hyberson, who is a partner with him in the lab. And, and uh, Dr. Gao is the genomics core lab head of University of Colorado. Again, the head of the genomics core lab. He's also working in the lab with Dr. McCord as a partner with Dr. McCord with the business with him all the time. And they have a lot of interns that help out, help out with this too from the University of Colorado. But um, what you're seeing here are ACE2, TMPRSS2. These are abbreviations that you really need to know that are highly associated with COVID-19. Of course, the study mentions COVID-19 and, and, and mentions NERF2 activation as an agent against it, especially with PB-125, especially with, you know, if it were to show what happens with PDP-123, I think that would be even stronger because it, he's already showed us it's more effective NERF2 activation than PB-125. But this is just his second most powerful formula. And, you know, TMPRSS2, if you haven't heard of that by now, I've been talking about this. I did a big series, Beat Coronavirus Now, as soon as the fear pandemic hit. And I was helping zero convert AIDS patients in the middle of the big AIDS scare when top medical minds were saying that was impossible in the mid nineties. Um, so I have a little bit of experience. I, I'm, I'm kind of an advanced form of immunologist, even though I'm not licensed. So I, I, can't, uh, I can't say that I have any kind of licensed doctorates, but I'm more like the doctor of divinity of medical industry, of medical science or non-secular, put it that way. But, um, and I have, a, I have some doctorates like that, all non-secular. So TMPRSS2, that is the protein that all coronaviruses have to have in order to attach to the ACE2 receptor site so that they can insert themselves in the cells so that they can replicate, okay? They can't, if without TMPRSS2, they can't even do that. And it's also regulated by NERF2. TMPRSS2 is. This is what this article is about. And so are the uh, 36 cytokines. Uh, all the anti-inflammatories are too. And what people die from, presentations I've given several on this, it's been proven, the people who die, regardless of co comorbidity, have terminal inflammation. And uh, we know that a, a lot of that is because of too much of a cytokine storm. 
we have our genes tuned properly, we have a stronger constitution that helps, that helps uh, possibly so that we don't have too much of an expression. We can't guarantee 100% for everybody that will prevent them from dying of COVID-19. So I'm not doing that. And um, I'm being very careful, even with having doctorates there. Uh, I do have a doctorate of divinity and theology. But I'm more of an interfaith type, interfaith type person with a very strong Christian background, but I'm kind of out of the box, obviously. So those who don't know me, those who do, that's great. Um, I've written a book about and documenting my doctorates, how I got them. It's called Bittersweet. What I've been through, I've learned all empowerment is bittersweet. And what you're learning here, maybe, maybe some of it's been bittersweet for you. The time that it takes and some of the things that may have been total paradigm shifting that were uncomfortable because of what you were taught before. Uh, I empathize with you, okay? I really do. So I just wanted to, um, Show you this article um, PubMed in Antioxidants Magazine. There's that. There's more supportive articles of this too. There's much more that we can share with you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the share on that. Come back and we're home. Home. We're, we're, we're now on the, the last stretch to the finish line of this presentation. So Obviously, ingenuity is completely unmasked, big pharma and small pharma. And how that works is very simple, very clear. What they were big at is making money. They've had a huge, big, huge financial influence. Meanwhile, each of their actual drugs, the past, has still only targeted one gene at a time. Some of them have actually got it wrong, but NERF2 has never gotten it wrong. NERF2 has always taken each of the 3,000 plus survival genes in the right direction of expression to produce the right amounts of each protein, each of which helps restore homeostasis, efficiency, and functionality of your cells. No wonder why for every dollar we've spent to solve our healthcare problems, the worse the outcomes and higher the death rates by disease. If each drug only targets one of over 3,000 disease mechanism genes, and the drugs also have their long list of negative effects, the way they work chemically, it's no wonder the sicker people get. The more money they're willing to pay for more help, and the more money the drug companies make, and the more money they make, the sicker people get. It's a big cycle. Around and around and around we go. For how long have we been hearing about this and not understanding it? The technology we're showing you, NERF2 activation, is so aligned with the timing and trends of today, especially with genomics, the number one NERF2 activator, Dr. McCord, has produced. Healthcare costs have been doubling and tripling every 10 years since 1950. And the same healthcare costs have been the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States for decades. And how much of that do you think we can change with the solutions that actually do what they're supposed to do? Even at the most subtle level, with the first effect of NERF2 activation, formula, which is the bulk of what we shared, shared with you during the, the bulk of the time in the initial part of this presentation, what we talked about, what we were able to show to prepare you for the bigger picture that you can now see. Even several top medical minds are saying this is a revolutionary breakthrough game changer that will radically change how we solve our health problems across the board forever. And this will change the way we achieve high performance health and longevity forever. Just think about this. What we currently know is that each of the drugs in the past have only targeted just one disease mechanism gene at a time out of 3,000 plus. And they're still making 1.3 trillion with a capital T every year while our own master gene regulator called NERF2 tunes 100% of all 3,000 plus without the long list of negative effects of all the drugs. That is some paradigm shifting perspective. How many of you have heard the basic business premise, find a need and fill it? If they can make 1.3 trillion per year, per year in global sales with a one-to-one -one ratio 
of a drug to gene ratio. What can be accomplished with a one to 3,000 plus ratio? This area of science has been taking the medical community by storm. And for those who have not known the medical schools, yes, they've been heavily funded by big pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, and their uh, pharmaceutical industry, their financial influence is more evident today than ever before. It's not just the medical schools, it's especially with their financial influence on politicians, government leaders, and even the legal systems worldwide is more evident today than ever before. It's usually the ones who've taken the most money from big pharma, who've sold out, who are promoting big government, who don't really have the interests of protecting the rights of the people. And they're just selling out to the highest bidder. And big pharma has been a big bidder. Much information of who's taken the most from them and what they've done for that is public. One documentary I recommend is called Poison in Paradise, which is very revealing, even though it focuses more on what's been happening here in Hawaii, with politics and government here. And the, the big chemical companies, especially the Garden of Island, the Garden, the Garden Island, Kauai, is what they focus on the most with that. But as a whole, with what the governor has done with the whole state, it focuses on big politics of Hawaii, but it's been happening around the world. It's happening for a long time, and it's now more evident than ever. Out of, more out of balance than ever, so it's more evident than ever. Balance is another law of nature. And as you may have heard, nature seeks balance. And with a massive imbalance within the pharmaceutical industry, it seems their whole mountain may just all come crashing down on top of them very soon, more or less. It's bound to happen sooner or later. Every law has its blessing, but we must still put the law into action for our own lives to receive that fruit. And I'm very excited, and I hope you're as excited as I am, to do what we can to help make the positive shift happen. However that balance is meant to be restored, it looks like we're in the perfect place at the perfect time. Each gene produces a unique protein that all do different things. Some of them are also called enzymes or peptides, depending on what qualities and size they have but they're each unique proteins with unique purposes. And our survival genes produce proteins with vital purposes, survival purposes. Without being regulated by NERF2, we end up producing too much of the wrong things and not enough of the right things, which causes the cells to malfunction. And in this case, it is literally related to decreased survival and is literally linked to every disease. Reversing mechanisms Reversing mechanisms that cause the cells to malfunction restores the efficiency and functionality of our cells. As true as all of this is, I can't guarantee you'll apply any of what I'm saying or whether or not you'll make healthy choices in every other aspect of your everyday life. Because that's your responsibility. And it's up to you. Taking even the best NERF2 activator in the world can't protect someone who steps in front of a fast moving truck. And the point is, there are an infinite number of ways people can metaphorically be stepping in front of a fast moving truck. So I admit that I can't guarantee to cure your cancer or prevent you from getting COVID-19. And I definitely don't know any drug that can do that either. But we can at least be over 3000 times more sure I'm gonna restructure what I'm, what I'm stating here. But can we at least, form, I'm, I'm structuring it in the form of a question. I'm being very careful. I can ask all kinds of questions more comfortably than I can making a, a stating a statement. So can we at least be over 3000 times more sure with NERF2 activation than we can with the drugs? 
Again, ask the right questions and you'll get the right answers. Yes, and we can stay friends as we uh, educate people within supplement industry, within it, all the industries that are connected to the health industry, that uh, so much of it is. We can stay, you can stay friends as you educate the beautiful, good people who have done the best they can to be educated, and you can teach them with plenty of love and empathy. Let's help them understand the important aspect, how important it is to join us. It's how a thing is done that makes it what it is, positive or negative. As we approach people correctly, watch and listen carefully to know when and how to approach them, those who are meant to join us will join us and help us with the much, much bigger picture. The bigger picture is in targeting what's been out of balance the most with our economy. Nature seeks balance. And the pharmaceutical market, which is a much bigger money market to go after, is ripe for a radical reduction and transfer of wealth with the one-to-one -one drug to gene ratio. And we can shift the health and wealth of many more lives, which the much bigger picture of the one to 3,000 plus nerve two to gene ratio, which is 100% of the 3,000 plus survival genes. With Dr. McCord's nerve two activation formula, we're regulating 100% of the 3,000 plus genes with Dr. McCord's nerve two activation formula. Just think about it. Now, as you think about who you could possibly reach out to for third party validation, now, as you think about whether or not this will work for you or whether you need to get your own test, your before and after blood tests done, first consider what this is already proven to do and consider who you have to reach out to that is capable, that is any greater authority to validate this for you, any greater than ABC, Harvard, VCU, American Heart Association, Free Radical Biology and Medicine, or Dr. McCord, the world's last Elliott Crescent gold medal recipient. What should you do next? Please contact the person who shared this with you to arrange a Zoom meeting. And you may even, you may even be able to catch a replay on that to help you cover your personal business franchise and product options. If they aren't able to help you with that, then ask them to refer you to who shared it with them, and so on. So you can move forward in the most harmonious way. This is a time sensitive period, as you may be the first person to actually be hearing about this in your town, your area, your state, or your country, especially. And it is very new, even to the USA, Japan, Mexico, and now, 220 other countries. Feel free to reach out to me if needed. And again, I'll ask you to reach out, reach back to whoever shared this with you because we should at least recognize them and give them a 24 hour chance to act on this with you. Because without them, you may not have even heard about it. I also recognize the time and effort it takes to listen and learn what it's taken you to listen and learn from this presentation. Congratulations for increasing the level of your intelligence. Some people say, just keep it simple, stupid. I say, I like to give it to people in simplicity, but I also like to then take them right out of their comfort zone to increase the level of their intelligence, which means some growing pains sometimes. Congratulations for increasing your level of your intelligence in such a revolutionary time with such such revolutionary science, together we can transform the world with health and wealth towards the heaven on earth we've all dreamed of. Aloha.